Early one July morning in 2008, trucker David Barry pulled out of his driveway and headed along the fielding New Zealand road. Out of the corner of his eye, he spotted the headlights of his neighbor's car shining out, the car waiting idle. David decided to check out where Scott Guy, the vehicle's owner, was. David discovered a horrifying scene when he pulled up to that farm gate. There was blood everywhere. Scott was dead. A lengthy investigation followed until the authorities were satisfied they had their suspect. But had they charged the right person? Scott Guy grew up in Byerburn, his family's farm near Fielding, Manawatu Waganai, New Zealand. After leaving school at 16, Ewan McDonald started working for the farm. He was married to Scott's sister, Anna. They went on to have four children together. Ewan was responsible for running the dairy operation. Scott's job was raising the calves and growing crops for the cow's feed. Both Scott and Ewan worked as farm managers for Scott's parents, Brian and Joe, who owned the property. Their salaries were around $100,000 annually. When the family got together for a meeting in 2008, Scott explained his expectations of inheriting the farm. This caused tensions to rise between him and Ewan. In May of that same year, both Ewan and Scott received 400 shares, accounting for 20% of the business transferred by Scott's parents. At the subsequent trial for Scott's murder, Brian Guy testified that he had informed his son that he would not inherit the farm and would need to buy out the other stakeholders to acquire ownership. This didn't cause any conflict. Scott seemed to understand this, and Brian recalled all was well in the year following. Two weeks before Scott's death, he and McDonald attended a dairy conference together in Invercargill, and according to Nikki Guy, Scott's other sister, they had an enjoyable time. Callum Bow, a former farm worker for the Guys, revealed to the police that he and Ewan embarked on nighttime excursions referred to as missions. During these outings, they trespassed on properties, engaged in deer poaching, and sought revenge against farmers who had caught them by discreetly returning to vandalize valuable livestock and property. Callum informed the police that during one of these missions in October 2008, they set fire to an old house on Guy's Island. In January 2009, approximately 18 months before the shooting incident, they vandalized a house being constructed by Scott and his wife, Kylie, causing $14,000 worth of damage. At that time, no one but Callum and Ewan knew what they had done. Between 4.43 a.m. and 5 a.m. on July 8, 2010, Scott Guy was fatally shot at the end of his driveway while opening the farm gate. The cause of his death was shotgun wounds to his neck, face, and arm. The truck driver and neighbor David Barry was the first to find Scott's body a few hours after he was killed. He immediately called the police at 7.08 a.m. and then informed his landlord, Bruce Johnstone. When Bruce arrived, he looked over Scott's body briefly before calling Ewan at 7.16 a.m. Shortly after, two police vehicles arrived at the scene, followed by Ewan on his quad bike. Oddly, three chocolate Labrador puppies disappeared during the time that Scott had been shot. Police assumed they had been stolen, possibly as a way to make Scott's murder look like some sort of burglary. During the initial stages of the investigation, the police identified approximately 60 individuals as potential suspects. Among them was a man who had committed an aggravated robbery just four days before Scott's murder. A cigarette of the same brand stolen during the robbery was found on Scott's driveway near the crime scene. However, the investigation into this individual ceased when his girlfriend, who was addicted to methamphetamine, informed the police that he had returned home around maybe 4 a.m. 
Nevertheless, several people informed the police that this man, whose identity is protected, might have been involved in the murder. Testimony from farm worker Matthew Ireland revealed that he observed a car approaching from the direction of Scott Guy's residence as he arrived at the farm, nearly coinciding with the estimated time of Scott's murder. Matthew also mentioned a second car coming from the same direction, shortly after 5 a.m. while they were heading towards the milking shed. The police were unable to identify either of these vehicles. Another suspect was brought to attention by David Barry, who was the first person to discover Scott's body. He recalled encountering a tall, unshaven man with dark hair who reeked of alcohol and cigarettes two weeks prior to Scott's shooting. The man had knocked on Barry's door, asking about Scott's whereabouts. Assistant farm manager Simon Asplin, who harbored a grudge against Scott since their school days, was also looked into. Simon openly admitted that Scott's pissed a lot of people off. When Scott returned to the farm in 2008, Simon lost his preferred job of driving the tractors. During the trial, Simon acknowledged benefiting from Scott's death as it allowed him to regain his desired position on the farm, but he denied any involvement in Scott's murder. Following a lengthy investigation, authorities felt certain of the murderer. On April 7, 2011, Ewan McDonald was arrested for the murder of his brother-in-law. The trial began on June 5, 2012. The prosecution alleged that the tensions between Scott and Ewan over the farm inheritance hadn't actually ceased after the meetings in 2008. Crown Prosecutor Ben Vanderkoek alleged that Ewan intentionally closed the farm gates, knowing that Scott had to stop to open them. Vanderkoek then stated Ewan then shot Scott in the throat and then in the face after he got out of the vehicle. Vanderkolk further claimed that Ewan used one of the farm's shotguns and wore a size 9 Proline dive boots while committing the crime. These prints were one of few pieces of evidence found at the scene, and authorities believe that this strongly linked Ewan to the crime, since he wore that exact size and brand of boot. Allegedly, Ewan then rode his bicycle back to the farm, which was approximately 1.46 kilometers away, arriving shortly after 5 a.m. where he started his dairy duties. The prosecution believed Ewan then killed the stolen puppies, taking them as an attempt to make the crime look like a burglary, but there was little by means of evidence that actually tied Ewan to the scene. During their investigation, the authorities searched Ewan's property looking for the boots, puppies, or shotgun cartridges. None of the items were found. In the defense's argument, lawyer Greg King pointed out four significant flaws in the prosecution's case. The prosecution claimed that Scott was killed by two shots from the farm shotgun at 4.43 a.m. However, Four nearby residents testified that they heard three shots in quick succession around 5 a.m. King then brought out a witness who saw Ewan on the farm at approximately 5 a.m., meaning he couldn't possibly have killed Scott when the shots were heard. King also called upon an expert witness, an American shooting champion, who explained that the farm shotgun required reloading after two shots, making it impossible for three shots to be fired rapidly. During his closing statement, King highlighted that if there were indeed three shots, the farm's double-barrel shotgun could not have been the murder weapon. The expert witness suggested the possibility of a semi-automatic weapon being used instead. King also raised concerns about the police's handling of the investigation. He criticized their failure to consider alternative suspects and their lack of investigation into car tire marks at the crime scene and a sighting of the mysterious sedan on Erangi Road. After 11 hours of deliberation, the jury found Ewan McDonald not guilty of the murder of Scott Guy. 
A year later, Scott's father expressed his belief that justice had prevailed. He did not believe Ewan killed his son and made a plea to the real killer to turn themselves in. Following the trial, Scott's wife, Kindly Guy, took it upon herself to search for her husband's killer. She hired private investigator Mike Crawford to conduct the investigation. However, after 18 months, the investigation was discontinued due to financial constraints. Crawford mentioned that Scott Guy had received several phone calls the day before his death and another on the day of the murder. Surprisingly, no information about these calls, such as cell site data and subscriber details, was found in the police file on the case. Crawford believed that these calls could have potentially provided valuable insights into the identity of the killer. Following the trial, Ewan had several other charges pop up against him. He and Callum Bo had killed 19 calves owned by a farmer who had reprimanded them for deer poaching on his land. It was also discovered that Ewan and Callum burnt down an old house and emptied a significant amount of milk from a vat on another neighbor's farm. In September 2012, Ewan was sentenced to five years in prison for lesser charges, including the calf killings and the property damage. He became eligible for his first parole hearing in December 2012. Tragically, Ewan's defense lawyer, Greg King, who was well known in New Zealand, was found dead in Wellington in November 2012. The coroner determined it to be a suicide. Ewan was denied parole, yet again, in November 2014. He was released from prison on November 2, 2015, but remained subject to the terms of his parole. So, if Ewan McDonald wasn't the person who killed his brother-in-law, then who was? Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments. And most importantly, please subscribe and ring the bell. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a new intriguing case.